I said, so you do it. And then you'll know why, you know, not unbalance a go-kart tire, you know, and, and it's just something you just can't do in 10 minutes, even when you have all the good tools. Well, and that's the other side of it that people don't realize. We're probably getting a little sidetracked, but that's a good conversation. Well, we are. Um, people don't realize, like, when you go to a shop and, you know, the shop we work for, we charge $250 to do a top end on a shifter. Uh, and people all, you know, the do it yourself or it's always, oh, that's ridiculous. Well, it should be like 50 bucks. Well, what they don't realize it goes into it is we have, ex- we have an expensive hone. We have expensive tooling specific to every single engine. We know what to set everything to. So it's not like we're just using channel locks and, so, you know, the Harbor Freight tools and then slapping a top end together. It, we're measuring stuff. We're honing things. We're going through the carburetor. We're going through the fuel pump. Uh, on some engines, on our top end, we're going through the clutch baskets. I, I mean, it's all, it's all these little things that people don't think about. And like you just said, it's like it's the tooling, it's the experience. It's like okay, you don't know how to do it, and you didn't take the time to buy the tools to do it properly. No, no, you're you're you're, you're right. And then and then like our. And I'm going to change the subject again anyway. Our average road racer right now is 51 years old. Oh, the average came down. Good job. Yeah. yeah. Good job, yeah, it, Jimmy. It, it comes it, it, it come, it come down a little bit. You know, yeah, Jimmy did it. He changed the curve on us. Yeah. Um, I, ha- I have people that are in their mid and late 70s still driving. And they're competitive. Yeah, no, that's and, true. And, and it's and it's just you know I'm I see I see the racing industry as a slowly dying sport, but um, as long as I'm breathing air, I'm going to try to keep it going. Well, I was going to say maybe under your racers. <laughs> yeah, but but it's it's for 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 us, and and it, and it goes back to. Um, I think the technology and the hand skills and that type of thing, we are no longer a stepping stone into a, a higher sport. Like it was back when, when, when Pruitt ran with us and, you know, we can go back and, and, and look at all the people that used to run road racing that, that ended up in some type of auto sports now. Yeah. Um, and, and and all that, you know, where, where did they go? And they went from sprint racing to road racing to to becoming pro cars, or you know, in some type in some type of stuff. And and that stepping stone just isn't there anymore. Now they start them out in kid carts at five years old. And to me, to me now, what I see in in the sprint racing world for for the young kids in karting is little league all over again. Yeah, but I, I, so I, I never made it, I, I was never involved in road racing in the 90s, um, but I've heard from numerous people that road racing in the 90s is what sprint karting is now when it comes to the younger drivers, the talent, how competitive everything is, um, and I can't even begin to list the names that came out of road racing because I wasn't around, but Apparently, back in the 90s, you were, if you wanted to use karting as a platform to move on, you were a road racer. You weren't a sprint guy. No, correct. Um, our, our largest event at Sonoma, this would have been 2001. It was somewhere between 1999 and 2003. We had 225 drivers show up for that race. Uh-huh. Now we're, we're at 85, 90 drivers. Yeah. And, but, and, and the yeah. age, and, and, and I think most of them either died or, or have retired because it, it's the new blood's not there anymore. Yeah. Well, one of the real, I mean, one of the things that really attracted me to the road racing a couple of years ago uh, I mean, you have a great group of guys out there, so that that's part of it. But this is going to sound so crappy. 
but I don't have to sit there and work out or go to the track three, four or five times a month to stay in shape, to hang on road racing. Um, I take my 125 out there and I've had a lot of fun and getting used to this speed. That was probably the hardest part being that the dynamics at a hundred miles an hour in the same cart that I drive at Dixon, Sonoma, Blue Max, et cetera, at 75 miles an hour, it's a little bit different. You got to bed definitely be a lot softer on the hands, but the conditioning. Well, there was, yeah, what was it about four weeks ago? A group of us went to Prairie city. Yeah. That killed me. (laughs) Oh, so what Mark's referencing, Mark's referencing the rental cars at Prairie city. (laughs) And, and and I I was I was a track champion at Prairie City in 2002. Yeah, you know, and 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 them carts, I got out. You guys laughed me. I think twice in the last thing I was done. I was like, I forgot how physical that that was. But but yet I go I go to a road a road track. You know, and of course I run a super cart, and and it's like, it's for me it's a Sunday ride. Yeah, it's easy. I mean, the speed is there, but it's, it's, if, if you're competitive in road racing and you're running in a group, it's a, I, I always compare it to a chess game. There's strategy involved in, in, in all of road racing. It's, you don't win the race on the first turn, first lap. It's, it's, you pick and choose your passing points. Um, and, and if you're racing somebody that, that you guys are both, pretty much equal, then it becomes a mind game because usually the leader's not going to win the race. Yeah. It, 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 and, it, and it's that, that's why I like to watch the, the four strokes. We call them tater diggers, but them guys out there, they're, they are constantly, they're not bump drafting, but they're awful close to it. They're drafting each other and then, and then they'll, they'll play with each other for a while, but it's, it's all about technique being smooth and, and they study their, their their opponent and at the end it's like a swarm of bumblebees you know they all spread out and they all try to pass each other and, and it's really great racing watching them guys work on their strategy for a race um and it's and it's even that way with the 125s it's all about strategy most of the time so they're fun to watch as well and and i think most of the drivers they're not that concerned um with, with the speed, I, I don't think for certain turns at certain places, it's like, Whoa, that's fast. You know, yeah. it kind of catches your breath a little bit. Um, but it's, it's, it, it's not the, the speed sensation. I don't think once you get used to it, you don't really realize you're going that fast. Yeah. Once, um, once you, yeah. Once you get over the, the different sounds and noises, uh, the helmet buffering, then the actual, I guess uh, relation of speed is slower. I I think it's more it's more about the wind the, the wind and the buffeting against your body. Um, it, in, in some cases, it's more alarming than the, actually how fast you're going. Yeah, and then the other thing too is this the where I, where I had a problem. I'm used to tracks that are 22 to 28 feet wide. And on the road race, I, I don't know how wide they are. What, 35, 40 feet on, on a road race? Uh-huh. So going through the corner and rolling out, my my tendency was to pinch everything off. Because in my my mind, I was I, it was predetermined the tracks are only this wide. Then the road racing is like, wait a second. I, I'm not even halfway down the track and I'm pinching it off. I have another half a track to go to roll this thing out. And once I got used to that, it's like, Oh man, this is, this is fun. But I, I do have to yeah, say, and then, I haven't done a lot of road racing, but uh, the couple of tracks that I have done, I really like the Thunder Hill West track. <laughs> I, I, I just smiled, um, the whole time in that infield section. Um, uh, especially when you did not the bypass, but you did the inside loop. Is that what the, you call it? The, 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 original, the original configuration. Yeah, that was just so much fun. The only part about the track I didn't like was turn two. I kept hitting the bump in, at, in the middle of the corner that just started beating the heck out of my elbow on my engine. But uh, I just never could figure out how to get through there. But that was such a 
fun layout. And, and what's what's fun about that track is turn one and turn two. Most people, you know, they didn't realize, but that's probably one of the secret passing zones that, that a few people will actually make passes in there and they'll go, you can't do that. I says, you just did it. Oh, the, I think it's like you 20 know? guys passed me in that section because I, I went sure. straight off. <laughs> so, so for a, for a one twenty five, I, I want to say a one, a one sixteen, I think is, is the fastest time for that, for that layout. A and then one sixteen. 116 or 117. Okay. Um, um, I, I could I could be wrong, but that's, uh, that's off the top of my head. Uh, and then, of course, a super cart with a 250, they're only doing it in a 115. So, so, so it's an ideal 125 track, and it's an ideal sprint cart road race track. It is, because there was really <laughs> some good spots to really get on the brakes. So for those that those that like to run, let's say Atwater, you know, with 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 a, with, a, with a long with a long straight and that you know the fast 180 degree sweeper, Thunder Hill West has some of that, but it's it's a it's a mile 1.8 miles long. Yeah, and it's a and it's a fast 17 turns, and if if you're in shape at 20 years old, you're going to come off that track huffing and a puffing. That, yeah, that was a, that was such a fun, fun layout. I really enjoyed it. Well, Mark, I'm well, gonna, so I'm, we'll gonna, let... I'm gonna let you go because we've been on for a while here. But I, Alrighty. I really appreciate your time. Um, no so problem. For more information, our listeners can go to um, nckroadracing.com. dot uh, com. You're also on Facebook under NCK Road Racing, and uh, we mentioned Speed Vegas, so go check out their website speedvegas.com uh, we mentioned thunder hill go check out thunder hill's website and as soon as we have some confirmations i have your events listed on the calendar so we're, we're good there i also have on the calendar direct links from from my calendar to your registration page so so people can register that way um is there any, any final thoughts you have um uh, no i just hope that just everybody stays safe and follows the guidelines and um hope to see everybody at their at the next race yeah we'll we'll be out there soon all right sir all right thank you mark thank you for having me no 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 thanks for coming on have a great weekend go nope. catch some fish all right thank you i'll try all right <laughs> <laughs> bye